Our politicians are incredibly good uh, at dealing with secondary problems. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, whenever anything has happened in Europe of any popular uh, uh, attempt to register discontent about the weakness of our political elites, uh, the politicians have been incredibly good at coming down on that secondary reaction. So in the UK, when uh, somebody called Tommy Robinson started a movement called the English Defence League, I didn't agree with it, I didn't like what it did, but he started this, it was a movement, a street protest movement. When he started that, very soon afterwards, uh, um, his uh, own house was raided by police, his family's houses were raided by police, computers were taken away, and he managed to get into prison on a mortgage fraud case. They sifted through everything in him, uh, in his background, everything in his life, everything in his family's life. They found something, he went to prison. Mortgage fraud is bad, don't get me wrong. But it seemed rather obvious to some of us that the reason he was in prison was not because of the mortgage fraud, but because he was a problem and people, particularly our politicians, wanted that problem to go away. My point about this is, Tommy Robinson, the EDL, was a secondary symptom of a problem. They were the result of politicians rightly being seen not to have done anything with the primary problem. And the question some of us have kept on asking is, if you could do that with that person who caused you a problem, why couldn't you do it with the people that person was objecting to? This is a front to recruiting people for ISIS. Why couldn't you send the, people, the police into the houses of every extreme Islamist mullah in Britain, every radical preacher in Britain? I can bet some of them have got some dog dodgy mortgage stuff on the books. I can, bet, I can bet you'll get some of them on a technicality to do with something they've done once, but that's not the aim. The aim is to go to the secondary problem. Another example, Chancellor Merkel in her New Year message on the Pegida protests. I don't agree with the Pegida protests particularly. That's not the point. It is a legitimate movement of people saying that they dislike some of the things that are happening in their country. But that is not... Uh, uh, their, pri their primary concern was not what Angela Merkel was concerned about. She and the entire administration of her government turns on the reaction to the problem. So in her New Year's message, she says um, that the Pegida protesters have coldness in their hearts. Sind Vorurteile, ist Kälte, ja sogar Hass in deren Herzen. Why does she not say the Islamists who the Pegida protesters are concerned about have the most incredible coldness in their hearts. That is our primary problem. We must be careful as Germans not to have too much coldness in our own hearts, but that is the problem. No, we have a political class that believes that you can solve these problems by dealing with the secondary symptoms. It is like going to a body racked with disease and solving a, a, a skin inflammation. This is a mass magnificent problem of our time, the inability to grapple with the primary problem. We've learned other things. We've learned, I would submit, in the last 10 years how incredibly slowly our societies crawl towards truths which should be self-evident. We have spent the last 10 years still going around the circumlocution of whether or not Islam is a religion of peace. They claim to do this in the name of Islam. That is nonsense. Islam is a religion of peace. We have had so many variations on this circumlocution now that I keep a, a small notebook that's pretty much filled with them. My favorite is um, the uh, movement from this terrorist attack has nothing to do with Islam to it has nothing to do with Islam and Islam is in any case a religion of peace to Barack Obama's best hit ever which came uh, um, last year after an American hostage was decapitated in Syria and Barack Obama said it not only doesn't have anything to do with Islam, it has less to do with Islam than any other religion. <laughs> so if somebody cuts off someone's head while shouting Allahu Akbar, the Buddhists should get it. <laughs> Long before, long before anybody else, long before, the Quakers should have it coming to them. <laughs> As president, I have repeatedly called on our Muslim friends and allies at home and around the world to work with us to reject this twisted interpretation of one of the world's great religions. And it's bizarre that that is a situation which we've come to. We have come to a situation, as, a, as a people have said about the Satanic Versus Affair, where, where we've internalized the fatwa. 
accompanied everywhere by round-the-clock special protection, a way of life he would endure for nearly 10 years. What was it about this novel that pushed Rushdie's life to the edge and created an international crisis the like of which has never been seen before or since. This is the extraordinary story of the Satanic Verses Affair. As societies, we've internalised this, and this is one of the things which I think we've learned most clearly from the last ten years. We've internalised the, absurd to use the phrase still, Mohammed cartoon crisis. But we have learned some things in the, in the last ten years, and I'll dwell on them for a moment. We've learned uh, for as, in as clear a way as could possibly have been learned by anybody that most of the press in free Western countries are cowards. Hardly any of the roughly 1.8 million people that came into the EU last year, hardly any of them would have qualified as refugees under the Geneva Convention. That's not true. They would, what, That's well, of not course true. I'm oh, sorry. What, what, we, we, talked yeah. we talked about facts. We talked about holding people to account. Yeah. Yeah. That is not true. Yes, it is. If you are fleeing Syria, you are unquestionably a refugee. <laughs> well, you are a displaced person. No, no. We've learned that most of our artistic establishment are cowards and that most of our politicians are cowards. We've learned that uh, industries... <laughs> We've learned that industries that spend much of their year uh, in award ceremonies patting themselves and each other on the back for their bravery stop when an actual act of bravery may be required. <laughs> we have watched as uh, the entire liberal class of artists and writers and thinkers stop just at the point where bravery is needed. Digby Jones, if I read you the quote that he made in the original interview with me, Douglas Murray said, Eastern Europe doesn't have an Islamic terrorism problem because it doesn't have much Islam. France has the worst problem because it has the most Islam. Now, he doesn't say it's all to do with extremism. He is talking about Islam. Are we ever, he says, going to draw any lessons from this? Apparently not. Is he right, Douglas Murray? Well, where, I think he forgot, I'm not saying he intentionally or didn't intentionally forget, but the, the, the word, you know, this country needs less fundamental Islam.